Hello friends, this is Fiction Domain. How are you all? So we are back with an interesting movie on what if Naruto had the power of the Supreme King. But before we start, if you want more stuff like this. Then be sure to subscribe and like this video. And if possible share this video with your friends. Now let's start the story. The world of dual monsters. In this world a game of cards and monsters has grown from a simple kid's game to a worldwide necessity to practically everyone who lives in this world. From the USA to the UK to Japan and every country in the world. For many it is a game and a means to have fun, but for others it is a way of life as many became professional duelists. People like Yugi Mudo and Sido Kaiba just to name a few. And it was here in Domino City, the first city in the world that was built around the game that we find the hero of this story. A young man around the age of 16 walks down the street. He wears black shoes, blue jeans with a white belt, blue shirt with a silver jacket over it, black fingerless, a silver chain around his neck, a silver backpack on his back with a dual disc on the backpack. His face is covered by his jacket's hood but has blonde hair, blue eyes and whisker-like marks on his cheeks. He is walking to the Kaiba Dome for the entrance exams to Duel Academy. Almost there. I should get there with plenty of time to duel and see how the other students do. Said the teen. You do know that you could have asked Pegasus or Sido to let you get in without the test right. So why go through this? Asked a female voice from behind him. You know the reason you will. I don't like anything handed to me. I want to work for things on my own. Said the teen as he continued to walk. Agreed. It is better to work for your accomplishments than let someone hand them to you. But I must ask, why are you going to Duel Academy? I thought that you were on your way to the pros already. Asked Yubel. Because Sido asked me to look in on some missing students. He believes that someone was messing with the shadow games on his island and he wants me to look into it. Plus, Tucson thinks that I could make some friends while there. That in both of my ka sense told me to try and get a girlfriend or four. Sigh, I swear they wants grandkids aplenty to spoil. Said the teen. Yubel chuckled at the teen along with another female voice. It does have a point. Any mother would want her children to give her plenty of grandchildren to spoil. I just wish that I wasn't sealed away when Indra and Ashura were alive. I would have spoiled those two rotten. Said a beautiful woman with pale white skin, pale eyes with a closed eye in the middle of her forehead and two horns coming out of her forehead as well. I know Kagaya. But I am not ready to have kids of my own yet. In a few years maybe but not right now. Said the teen. We know Naruto. But in time you will have children, and both we and your other dual monsters know that you will be a great father. Said Kagaya. Naruto smiles under his hood as he reached the Kaiba Dome. He signed up for the exam and went inside and waited for his turn. Due to all the students he had to wait a long time for his turn. While he waited he watched as many duelists as he could. A few impressed him with their skills and strategies, while others shouldn't even be in the school, since he could tell that they just got in thanks to the money of their parents. Naruto was watching a duel with a proctor seemingly trapping an applicant into a corner. The proctor has a big shield gardener on his side of the field and gear golem the moving fortress as well. The applicant has a voice raider on his side and a face down card as well. Okay new guy. Time for a multiple choice. You have two monsters staring you down, do you a. Throw in the towel, b. Beg for mercy. Or c. Run home to mama. Asked the proctor. The applicant was calm when he responded. Hmm interesting choices, but I respectively chose D. None of the above. I reveal my face down. The trap card ring of destruction. With this I destroy my voice raider and win this duel. The life points of both duelists went down, and the proctor lost the last of his points. Well done. Welcome to Duel Academy. Said the proctor. Thank you sir. Said the applicant. Naruto had watched the match since the beginning and was impressed. Not bad. Said Naruto. Indeed. He did well for someone his age that was not born in the nations. Said Yubel. Agreed. But he still has a way to go before he can be a worthy opponent to Naruto. Said Kagaya. Naruto smirks a bit at the two dual spirits. Man that guy was good. I bet he will be one heck of a pro when he gets older, said a small voice near Naruto. Naruto looked over to see a small boy with blue hair and glasses looking down at the duel that just ended. But he is. But he still has a way to go until he goes pro. As we all do. Said Naruto. Yeah I guess you're right. Name's Cirrus. Said the boy. Naruto shakes the boy's hand. Naruto, nice to meet you. The other students also had some words about the teen that just dueled. He is pretty good hutch as. Asked a teen with glasses. Best the rumors of him being a whiz kid are true. Said another teen. He's a punk. We went to duel prep school for three years. We are the ones who are ready for duel academy. This people will soon learn that the hard way. The Chaz Princeton way. Said a black haired teen. Above them three teens looked down at the teen and two were impressed. He did pretty good. What do you think Zane, Naomi? 
asked a blonde hair girl with a well-developed figure. Yeah he did Alexis, but there is always room for improvement. Said a red hair girl with purple eyes, and just like her blonde haired friend also has a great figure. Maybe but he still has a long way to go before he is at the top of the school, let alone making it in the pros. Said Zane. As Naruto waited for his turn the proctors talked about all of the applicants that made it this year. Looks like we had a good crop this year. Said one proctor. But we do. But we have one last person to test. Said another proctor. However another person just scoffed. It's too late for him. He will have to try again next year. Said the man. But sir. He was one of the first people here. But other people took too long. Said the first proctor. Did you just call me sir? Asked the man. Oh I am sorry ma'am. Tried the proctor. It's doctor you idiot. I didn't get my PhD in dueling for giggles. And I don't care if he was first here or last. He will have to wait until next year. Yelled the doctor. Just then the doctor's phone goes off. Yes. Who is it I am a busy man. Said the doctor. It's me Crowler answered Chancellor Shepard. Ah, Chancellor. How nice to hear from you. Said Crowler as he began to sweat. I was just calling to make sure that you were giving every person a chance to try and make it into the school yes. You did get rid of a dozen or so applicants last year since they called you what? Sir or ma'am or something stupid. I just wanted to make sure that something like that didn't happen again this year. Well I will leave you to it. Said Shepard as he hung up on the other end. Prowler scowled as he hung up his phone. Damn fool. The school has enough slackers. But if he wants everyone a chance to get in then I might as well do just that. Said Crowler as he walked off. Doctor, which deck should we use? Asked a second proctor. Don't worry about that. I will handle that. Said Crowler as he walked off. Naruto and Cirrus were still talking when an announcement is heard. Will Naruto Xiaolong Rose come down to Arena 3? Naruto Xiaolong Rose to Arena 3. Naruto gets up and begins to walk. My turn. Said Naruto. Good luck. Said Cirrus. Naruto gives the small boy a thumbs up and makes his way down. Naomi had wide eyes as she looked down at the arena. Could he be? Is it really him? Thought Naomi. Alexa saw the look in her friend's eyes and became worried. Naomi. Are you okay? Asked Alexis. Naomi looked at Alexis and nods her head. Yeah. I'm okay. Answered Naomi. Alexis however knew her friend was lying but didn't say anything. Naomi went back to looking down at the arena and waited for this person to appear and see if this is her lost brother. Naruto made it to the arena and found the proctor of his match. When he laid eyes on the proctor however, he and his dual spirits had the same thought. Excuse me. Are you a man or a woman? Asked Naruto. Almost everyone fell to the ground and I am style at that question. Crowler gets up off the ground and glares at Naruto. I am a man you brat. Yelled Crowler. Sorry but I couldn't tell sir. Said Naruto. I have to admit I was also confused by this man's look. I thought for sure that he was an ugly woman. Said Kagaya. I have seen ugly dual spirits prettier than this human. Said Yubel. It's Dr. Velian Crowler to you. I am the head of the obelisk's boys dorm and the department chair of techniques at Dual Academy. Said Crowler. The department chair. How interesting. Let's see what you got. Said Naruto as he got his dual disc ready and put in his deck. Crowler grins and readies his dual vest. Yes, let's. Dual. Yelled the two. I will start if you don't mind. First I will play the spell card confiscation, and by paying 1000 life points, I can send one of your cards to the grave. Said Crowler. Crowler. 3000 LP. The hologram of Naruto's cards appear in front of Crowler. He looks through them and grins. Ah yes I know most of these cards from my youth. Let's see, I will get rid of, Monster Reborn. Said Crowler as he pointed to the spell card. Naruto puts the card in his grave and waits. Now then I will play two face down card and then activate my heavy storm card. Said Crowler as he destroyed his cards, but two monster tokens appear on Crowler's side of the field. Since I destroyed my two statue of the wicked cards, I get these two tokens. Said Crowler. That jerk. He is using his own deck and not a proctor deck against this guy. Said Alexis. You're too soft Alexis. We just might get to see Crowler's rare card. Said Zane. Naomi looked a little worried for who she thinks is her brother. Now I sacrifice them to bring out my ace monster. Ancient Gear Golem. Said Crowler. The two token monsters are destroyed and in their place is a massive creature made of metal and rusting gears. Ancient Gear Golem. ATK. 3000 Death. 3000. The wind of the monster appearing blew Naruto's hood off showing everyone his face. But few cared about his looks and were more interested in Crowler's monster. There it is. Crowler's best monster. Said Alexis. Interesting. I wonder if this kid can get out of this one. Said Zane. Naruto. 
thought Naomi. Oh man. Naruto is in trouble. Said Cirrus. But he is. Unless your friend can figure out how to beat it, I don't think he is going to win this one. Said the team from before. Cirrus looked over to see who spoke. Oh you're the guy who dueled before, Bastion right? Asked Cirrus. Yes Bastion Misawa. Nice to meet you. Said Bastion. So, Brad what do you think of my monster? Asked Crowler with arrogance dripping from his voice. Naruto looked at the monster and then a Crowler with a deadpan look on his face. His dual spirits doing the same. I think that you are an idiot. Said Naruto. Excuse me. Yelled Crowler while the rest of the people in the stadium was shocked to hear that. I will admit that Ancient Gear Golem is powerful, but you played it poorly. It has no defense since it can't attack right now, and you have no cards in your spell and trap zone to defend it. Said Naruto. Crowler grits his teeth in anger at Naruto, while the applicants had to agree with Naruto that Crowler's monster was defenseless as it was. Now. Let me show you how to play a monster. First I play Pot of Greed to draw two cards from my deck. Next I play Double Fusion. This lets me fuse twice so long as I pay 500 life points. Said Naruto. Naruto. 3500 LP. So I first fuse Elemental Hero Avian and Elemental Hero Burstinatrix to create Elemental Hero Flame Wingman. Said Naruto. His two monsters fuse to create a stronger monster. But I am not done. Next I fuse Wingman with Elemental Hero Sparkman to create Elemental Hero Shining Flare Wingman. Sparkman and Flame Wingman fuse into a new monster with silver armor. Shining Flare Wingman. ATK 2500 Def 2100. Prowler however wasn't impressed. A powerful monster, but it is still weaker than my golem. Wrong. You see for each hero monster in the grave Shining gains 300 more attack points. And right now there are four in the grave. Said Naruto. Shining Flame Wingman. ATK 3700 DEF 2100. What? Wait time out. Said Crowler. I don't think so. Shining Flare Wingman, Shine Stream Blast. Yelled Naruto. Shining Flare Wingman rushes at the golem and punches it right in the face destroying it. Crowler. 2300 LP. And thanks to his effect Shining Flare Wingman deals damage to you equal to your monster's ATK points. Said Naruto. No. Yelled Crowler. Shining Flare Wingman points its fist at Crowler and blasts the doctor in the face with its light. Crowler. 0 LP Naruto wins. Naruto turns off his dual disc and smiles at his victory. Looks like I'm in teach. See you at Duel Academy. Said Naruto. Naruto then walked off to head home. Nicely done Naruto. You really creamed that ugly man. Said Yubel. Yes a great duel to be sure. Not the hardest that you have been in, but I wasn't expecting much from that fool. Said Kagaya. Thanks. I can't wait to tell Tusan, Kasans, Yang and Ruby as well. Said Naruto. Prowler glared at Naruto as he walked off. I will get him for this humiliation if it's the last thing that I do. Thought Crowler as he bit onto a napkin. Wow, that guy has a future here at Duel Academy. Said Alexis. He just might. Said Zane. Naomi lets out a breath that she was holding and smiled. Nice job Naruto. I am glad that you are coming to Duel Academy. I just hope that I can fix what I had done. Thought Naomi. Naruto walks on home to pack for his term in Duel Academy, along with his adoptive sisters. Unaware of all that will happen while at Duel Academy. From dark riders to annoying teachers to Naruto's past coming back to bit him in the ass. But he will see it all through, for he is not only the reincarnation of the second son of the Sage of Six Paths, but the supreme king of the gentle darkness, and no one will stand in his way. Naruto was walking to his home to tell his family that he made it into Duel Academy. The same place that his sisters are going to. His sisters Yang Xiaolong and Ruby Rose had won their places in Duel Academy days ago, in a tournament sponsored by Sido Kaiba, so they didn't need to take the entrance duels or tests. As he walked Naruto spotted a man with dark black hair with a silver necklace around his neck and stank of booze. Sai, crow. Said Naruto as he rounded a corner to find his adoptive uncle walking home from an all-night drinking contest with himself. Crow sees his adoptive nephew and smiles a drunk smile. Hey kid. How'd ya go? Asked Crow with a bit of a slur in his voice. Naruto and his dual spirits roll their eyes at the man but have a smile on their faces. One with an OTK and only lost 500 LP due to my own spell card. How are you doing Uncle Crow? Lost another drinking game with yourself? Asked Naruto with a grin. Crow smiles and puts his hand on Naruto's shoulder. You know it. Said Crow as he almost fell over. Okay time to go home. Said Naruto as he guided his uncle to their home. I ever tell about how I got tie with Summer and Raven? Asked Crow. Yes. It involved a ton of alcohol, two pairs of handcuffs and locking the three of them in the same room for eight hours. Said Naruto. Haha. <laughs> My best work. Said Crow. 
and your reward for your best work was both your sister and Summer kicking your ass for three days straight. I remember that both Summer Kasan and Raven Kasan telling me that you couldn't sit or drink for six months. Said Naruto. Ah, totally worth it seeing Yang and Ruby nine months later. Said Crow. I still feel bad for Tai Tusan since he lost the use of his hands after they were born for about two weeks. Said Naruto. Haha. <laughs> True, Summer and Raven practically crushed Tai's hands into powered. Said Crow. The two finally made it to their home and walked up the steps and entered the house. A few moments later they are greeted by a black and white Korji. Bark, bark. Said the Korji. Hey's way. Have a good day boy. Asked Naruto. The dog barked at him with a smile on his face. Welcome home Naruto. I see that you brought Crow home with you. Said a male voice. Naruto looked to the den of the house to see his adoptive father Taeyang Xiaolong. Yep. Found him drunk on my way back from the Kaiba Dome. Said Naruto. Why I am not surprised Drunkle Crow would be found by you. Said a blonde teenage girl around Naruto's age as she came down the stairs. Because he is a lightweight when it comes to liquor Yang. You know that. Said Naruto. Tuckle, true. Let me help get him off you and to his bed to sleep off the booze. Said Yang. Thanks Yang. Said Naruto as Yang takes her uncle to his room since he fell asleep while walking to the home. Ai shakes his head at his brother-in-law. I still I don't understand why he is such a lightweight with a liquor since Raven can't outdrink me, Summer and anyone else by herself. Said Tai. Who knows. Well I better pack for Duel Academy. Said Naruto. You made it. Nice job son. I knew that you could. Said Tai. Thanks too San. Are you going to be okay here without the three of us? Asked Naruto as he meant himself, Yang and Ruby. Don't worry Naruto. I have both Summer and Raven with me. Plus, Crow even though he is like a big child sometimes. Said Tai. I heard that. Yelled Crow from his room. Both father and son laugh at that. With Yang bellowing in laughter from the next floor. Naruto smiles as he walks up to his room. He is grateful that this family has given him the one thing that he lacked in his previous home. A loving family that will always have his back. When he was younger it seemed that his previous family did love him, but as he got older that love began to dwindle to almost nothingness. It all started when Jiraiya told Naruto's birth father about a prophecy that the love for Naruto began to decline. The love fell to practically nothing until Naruto turned eight and he was disowned from his family. After that Naruto left the village of Konoha and began to wander the nations. It wasn't until he turned nine that he left the nations by sneaking onto a ship that took him to Japan. After a year of living on the streets of Domino City Naruto was found by Summer and Tai while they were out on a date night. The two took Naruto to their home and from that night on he became a true member of their family. Naruto never talks about his past family to his current family since he knows that doing so would change nothing. While Naruto doesn't hate his birth family, he doesn't care about them either. He feels no hatred, no compassion or sympathy for them. While there are a few people in Konoha that he misses he won't go back due to all the pain that he had to endure there. Naruto made it to his room and began to pack everything that he needed for his year-long stay at Duel Academy. A knock at his door made him look to see his other sister Ruby Rose. Hey Ruby. Are you ready to get to Duel Academy? Asked Naruto. You know it. I can't wait to get there and show off what I can do. Said Ruby. She and Yang have been huge fans of Duel Monsters for years. And when Naruto joined the family that love grew even larger. Ruby and Yang use variations of the same deck. A few years ago Industrial Illusion came out with a new arch type of monsters called Remnant Monsters. Ruby uses the Silver-Eyed Warriors with the Veil vale Huntsman cards, while Yang uses Veil vale Huntsman cards with the Grim Monster cards as well. Naruto chuckles at Ruby's cheerful attitude. I am excited too Ruby. But you do know that Zwei has to stay here right? Asked Naruto with a knowing look on his face. Ruby began to sweat in nervousness at that. What are you talking about? I am not taking Zwei with me. Said Ruby. Then why do you have dog food packed in your bag? Asked Naruto. Ruby looks to see that her bag was open thanks to Zwei trying to get at the dog food. Zwei? Why? Asked Ruby. Naruto smiles at his sister's attempt to bring their dog to Duel Academy. Naruto packed and got ready for the day when he and his sisters would head to the island. When Summer and Raven got home that night the family had a large dinner celebration for the three teens. Four days later the three made their way to the docks to get to Duel Academy. Domino Docks. Naruto couldn't help but smile. His reason for smiling was due to the angry face on Dr. Crowler. The reason why Crowler was angry was the yacht that was supposed to take his obelisk blues to the island stopped working. And the reason why the yacht wasn't working was due to two angry dual spirits. When Yubel and Kagaya found out that not only was Naruto placed in the Slifer dorms, but Naruto and the other Slifer students along with the Ra students had to get to the island by helicopter. 
while the two had no problems with the god in question they know that the Slifer Dorms was the worst dorms in Duel Academy. When the first helicopter got to the docks, the two destroyed the certain parts of the helicopter that would be impossible to fix unless it was taken to a repair shop. The two spirits did this to the second and the third helicopters and the yacht when they heard Crowler laughing at the Slifers and the Raws. So now everyone was waiting to find out what was going to happen. Nice work you two. Said Naruto. Thank you Naruto. No one is allowed to make you take some cramped helicopter while well, others are allowed to take a ship to the island. Said Yubel. I agree. How dare that gender confused fool try this with you and the others. He has no right to do that. If I had my body I would give that fool a piece of my mind. Said Kagaya. While Naruto was talking with his spirit Scrowler was about to burst in anger. Why are we still here? We needed to leave an hour ago. Yelled Crowler. Sorry, sir. But my men think that this happened because you wanted to leave the other students. Said the captain. Then they shouldn't have failed. Yelled Crowler. The captain sighed. Just then the captain got a call from Chancellor Shepard telling the captain to let all the students on the ship and to ignore Crowler in everything that he says. Once all the students were on board the ship finally started to work and began its voyage to Duel Academy. Naruto, Ruby and Yang were walking around and were enjoying the breeze of the ocean. This is awesome. I can't believe that we are on a yacht. This is so cool. Said Ruby as she zipped from one point to another in extreme speed. Slow down Ruby. If you go any faster you may fall off the ship. Said Yang. I can't help it. I just want to see everything. Said Ruby. Naruto chuckles at his sister. Just as he was about to walk over to her, Naruto noticed a person near a corner a girl with red hair looking at him. Naruto widened his eyes when he saw who it was. He sighed and looked to his sisters. Hey Ruby, Yang. How about you two go get some food? Said Naruto. Ruby's stomach growled at her when Naruto said that and blushed. That sounds like a good idea. Said Ruby. Yeah. You coming Naruto? Asked Yang. In a little bit. I just want to enjoy the ocean air for a little while longer. Said Naruto. Both sisters nod their heads and went into the ship to grab some food. After they left Naruto sighed and called out. You can come out now Naomi. Said Naruto. Naomi walked around the corner with a sad smile on her face. Naruto. Said Naomi. I see that you are doing well. But I have to ask, why are you here? Asked Naruto. Really? That is the first question that you ask. Naruto, I have been worried for you since you ran away. We all were worried. Said Naomi. Naruto sighs at that. Naomi don't lie to me. You and I both know that few miss me in Konoha. That's not true. Tusan and Ka San have looked for you ever since you ran off. They want you home. Said Naomi. Even thou that they didn't want me in the first place. Said Naruto. Naomi looked down at that. Naruto. I know that you think that we didn't care about you, but that is not true. We love you and always will. Said Naomi. Naruto shakes his head. If that was true then why was I the one who was ignored all the time? And why was I punished for the actions of Menma and Natsumi? Why did I have my cards taken away and given to those two every time I beat them in a fair duel? Why was my birthright taken from me without my having the right to defend and keeping it? Asked Naruto. As he spoke he never once raised his voice to his former sister. He wouldn't do that to her. It would mean that he still cared in some form when he doesn't. Naomi began to form tears in her eyes at that since it was true. Naruto was the oldest of the five siblings. But he was punished for things that he never did and had his birthright taken from him and given to Naomi and Natsumi, while Naruko would be caretaker of the Uzumaki secrets and Menma was selected to be trained to take over for their father as Hokage in the future. Naruto. I am sorry. I am so sorry for not being a better sister for you and not helping you when you were hurting. Please, is there any way to earn your forgiveness? Asked Naomi. Naruto looked into his former sister's eyes and saw everything in them. Pain, sadness, loneliness, relief and despair all swirling in them. Naruto sighs once again, but he needed to say this to her. Naomi, you know that the time for me to forgive is long past. No amount of apologizing or any acts of kindness can fix what has happened between me and your family. I now have what I always wanted in life. A true family that loves me for me and cares about my well-being. And if you want more proof of that then take a look at this. Said Naruto as he took out a dual card and handed it to Naomi. Naomi looked at the card and gasped when she did. In her hand is a card that Naruto got alongside her and their siblings. The card is a special card that belongs to the Uzumaki family, and each member got one when they turned four. The card is called Bonds of the Uzumaki, and it increased the power of one monster on the user's side of the field, based on the bonds that an Uzumaki has with their family. Since the Uzumaki is a clan that puts family first this card was a major powerhouse to any Uzumaki. The card has the symbol of the Uzumaki on it, with vibrant colors flowing off it. 
but Naruto's card looks dead with the swirl of the Uzumaki was faded, and the color of the card was gray and dull, like all the energy that was in the card was removed. Naomi had wide eyes when she saw the card. The card that showed the bonds of family that every Uzumaki should have was not present in the card that Naruto carried. Just looking at the card was making her sick to her stomach in realization of the pain that not only she but the whole family had put Naruto through. She handed Naruto the card back as she tried to fix her breathing. Now do you see what I mean? And trust me, you don't want to see the Namika's card. It's worse than the Uzumaki card. Said Naruto. Naomi looked like she was going to puke with the how she felt. The fact that Naruto felt so alone that it affected his family cards was staggering. And these effects wouldn't come from him but from the family as a whole. I'm sorry. I never wanted this to happen. Said Naomi as tears fell down her face. Naruto watches as his former sister cried her eyes out in pain. I am sorry for making you cry Naomi, but you had to know of this sooner or later. Now that you know, you can move on with your life without having to worry about me. I wish you well at Duel Academy. Said Naruto. Just as Naruto was about to leave Naomi grabs his hand. Wait. What makes you think that I would just give up like that? I know that I made many mistakes regarding you and I know that I can't make up for all of them. But that doesn't mean that I should just give up. You are and always will be my brother even if you changed your name. And no matter what you say that won't change anything either. Said Naomi through tear-filled eyes. Naruto sighs again at Naomi. Stubborn like a damn bull. Thought Naruto. What did you expect? She is in Uzumaki said Yubel. True. They get that from Hagoromo. Said Kagaya. It seems that nothing I say will change your mind on this will it? Asked Naruto. No. I will be a part of your life once again and nothing will put a stop to that. Said Naomi. Then we will need to fix that. Let's settle this with a duel. Said Naruto. Agreed. The wager is this. Should I win, you not only let me try to fix things between us and our family, but you will tell me everything that you did since you left Konoha. Said Naomi. Agreed. But should you lose, you will have to settle with us being acquaintances with no family ties to each other unless I say otherwise, I also don't have to tell you a thing about what happened when I left Konoha and you don't tell your family that I am at Duel Academy. Said Naruto. Deal. Said Naomi and she shook Naruto's hand. Very well. We will duel two days after we get to Duel Academy. And we will duel the nation's way. Said Naruto. Agreed. Said Naomi. See you then Naomi. Said Naruto as he walked off to find his sisters. As Naruto walked away Naomi watched her brother with a determined look in her eyes. I will fix things between us Naruto. One way or another. Said Naomi. She then walked away to find her friends and get some food. Naruto was walking to dining room when he heard a loud shout. Leave me alone you jackass. I don't want anything to do with any of you. Said a female voice. Naruto began walking to the bow of the ship to see a girl with fiery red hair and that she was surrounded by a group of male teens with blue blazers and with matching grins on their faces. Come on Jasmine. All that Jax wants is for you to be his girl. So how about it? Will you be his girl or do we got to be rough with you? Ask a teen with blonde hair and periwinkle eyes. I me Nito. Yelled Jasmine. Wrong answer. Said Nito. Just as the guys were about to move closer to Jasmine Naruto moves in. I do believe that the lady asked you to leave her alone. Said Naruto. Back off Slifer Slacker. This doesn't concern you. Yelled one of the obelisk boys. Don't care. Now leave her alone said Naruto. The boy tried to punch Naruto in the face, but Naruto grabbed the idiot's wrist before it could get close. Naruto turned at the fool who tried to punch him and looked at him with a bored look. Really? I have seen toddlers throw a punch harder and faster than you. And to make sure that you think twice about trying to sucker punch me. Said Naruto as he began to squeeze the teen's wrist making the boy scream in pain. Naruto let go after 30 seconds and looked back at the blonde-haired obelisk in front of him. So, are you all going to walk away? Or will you continue to stay like idiots? Asked Naruto. The obelisk boys glare at Naruto for a moment and in that moment Jasmine was able to make her way out of the area and find her friends. Nito sneers at Naruto and scoffs at him. Why am I not surprised that a slifer slacker would interfere with the betters? But seeing as you did interfere where you shouldn't, I propose a wager. Said Nito. What kind of wager? Asked Naruto. The simple one. You duel Jax here since you messed with his chance to get with Jasmine. When he wins you must not only give him your best card but also must never interfere with anything we would do. Said Nito. And if I should win? Asked Naruto. As if you could ever beat an obelisk. But should you win Jax will never talk with Jasmine again. Deal. Asked Nito. Naruto looks into the other blonde's eyes and sees that he is full of shit and arrogance and has no intention of following with his promises. But Naruto knows that he can handle this annoying person with both eyes closed. Deal. Let's get started. 
said Naruto. As the two got ready a crowd of people began to form around the two. Among the crowd is Ruby, Yang, Cirrus, Naomi, Jasmine and their friends. Also in the group are three teenage boys. The tallest of the group is of Hispanic descent, with blue eyes and wearing a pair of goggles on his head. The second person has tan skin, emerald green eyes and brown hair. The last person has messy green and black hair and green eyes, but is the shortest of the group. These three people are Rax Salazar, Ben Tennyson and Izuku Midoriya. Each of these three teens are in the Slifer door men were interested with Naruto's duel. Well this is interesting. I wonder how this started. Asked Ben. Who knows. I did hear yelling a moment ago. Said Rex. The blonde might have a problem since his opponent is from the blue dorm. Said Izuku. Yang scoffs at that. Hardly. My brother is one of the best duelists around. That idiot doesn't know what he is in for. Oh big bro. Show that blue who's boss. Yelled Ruby. The three boys turned to look at Yang with Ben blushing at Yang and Rex blushing at Ruby. What do you mean by that? Asked Izuku to Yang. Yang grins. Just watch and find out. Duel. Jax. LP8000 Naruto. LP8000. Elite's first slacker. First I play Marauding Captain. Then with its effect I summon Blue Flame Swordsman. Next I play the field spell Sojin to give my warriors a boost in attack power. Said Jax as the deck of the ship turns into a lush field of grass. Marauding Captain. ATK 1400 Def 400. Blue Flame Swordsman. ATK 2000 Def 1600. Oh man. Two monsters in one turn with a field spell. That is not good. Said Izuku. I'm not worried Green Bean. My big bro has got this. Said Yang. But that I end my turn. Beat that loser. Yelled Jax. Gladly. Naruto drew from his deck and grins. First up. I show you this card and then summon him to the field. Arise, Palladium Oracle Mad. Said Naruto as a powerful spellcaster appeared on his field. What? Yelled the crowd. Most were shocked to see a card that Yugi Moto uses, since that card was really rare. No way. How does your brother have that card? Asked Ben. Yang smiles. Oh that is not the only super rare card that my brother has. And since he just played that card I now know what deck he is using, and that blue is in for a lot of pain. Yeah. Go big bro. Yelled Ruby. Well be quiet they are trying to focus on the duel. Said a white haired girl with a scar over her left eye. Sorry but I was just encouraging my brother. Said Ruby. HMPF. Well you don't need to yell so loud that it hurts our eardrums. Said the girl. Back with the duel. Next up. I discard one card from my hand to special summon Apprentice Illusion Magician. Next I summon Magician's Valkyria. Said Naruto. On Naruto's side of the field, two beautiful female spellcasters appear on the field. Most of the male students blush at their beauty, while the female students grumble at how the males were acting at the duel monsters. Wow. Three monsters in one turn. Your brother is a powerful duelist. Said Izuku as he was writing notes in a journal that he carried. Yup. That is my big bro. He trained hard to be at the level that he is at right now. Plus, he was trained by some of the best in the world. Said Yang. Jax was sweating at this with three powerful monsters on the other side. He was cursing at himself for not putting down a trap card or something to defend himself. Now I place one card face down and then play Card of Sanctity, which lets us draw until we have six cards in our hands. Said Naruto with him and Jax draw their cards, but Naruto was far from done. Now I use the spell card Monster Reborn to bring back my Dark Magician Girl. The most famous female monster in all of Duel Monsters appeared on Naruto's field with a twirl and a wink at the people. Everyone but Ruby and Yang were shocked to see DMG. Oh my Kami. Naruto has Dark Magician Girl. How the heck did he get her? Asked Naomi. Alexis, Jasmine and another girl with black hair named Mindy were also shocked to see this. Are you girls seeing this? Asked Mindy. Oh we're seeing it. But I don't think any of us are believing it. Said Alexis. So cool. Said Jasmine. No way. Your brother has DMG. Asked Cirrus who is a huge fan of Dark Magician Girl. Of course. He got that card and most of the cards in the deck that Naruto is using from Yugi Moto himself. Said Yang. Seriously? Asked Rex. Yup, yup. Naruto got the cards as a present from Yugi. Said Ruby. Dax was wide eyes now at this, but it got worse as Naruto was still not finished. Next I play Sage's Stone. With Dark Magician Girl on the field, this spell card allows me to summon Dark Magician from my deck. Come forth, Dark Magician. Yelled Naruto as famous spellcaster monster in the game appeared on his field. All the Slifers and the Ra's were cheering at seeing Dark Magician in front of them. While Naomi and her friends were surprised to see Dark Magician with Naomi, a little worried for the duel that she was going to have with her brother in a few days. Izuku was writing in his notebook at lightning speeds and mumbling too. 
Ben and Rex were cheering at the famous monster, while the white-haired girl was shocked to see the spellcaster, as was a black-haired girl with a bow on her head, since she stopped reading her book. This is awesome. Go dude. Yelled Rex. He is so going to win. Seriously, how does your brother know Yugi Moto? Asked Ben. Ruby chuckles. Naruto met Yugi a few years ago and dueled him. He lost, but Yugi was so impressed by Naruto's drive that Yugi took him under his wing and taught Naruto a great deal in dueling. Yup. Afterwards Yugi gave Naruto copies of his cards as a present for all his hard work. Said Yang. So your brother was trained by the king of games? Yelled asked the white-haired girl. Yes he was. That is why that guy is out of his league. Said Yang. I now play Dark Burning Attack. When I have Dark Magician Girl on the field this spell lets me destroy all of your monsters. Said Naruto. The MG erases her wand and blasts Jax's two monsters with a powerful magical spell, destroying them with ease. Now time to end this duel. Spellcasters unite and blast him with dark magic barrage. Yelled Naruto. All five spellcasters raise their wands or hand and points them at Jax and sends a powerful blast of magic at the arrogant blue. Jax screams in fear as the blast covers him. Jax. LP 8000 10900 equals, minus 2900 Naruto wins. Naruto grins as the duel ends with Jax on the ground in shock and as a peculiar smell came from his pants. Now as we agreed on. You will leave Miss Jasmine alone. Now beat it. Yelled Naruto. Jax got up and ran off with a few blues following after him. Nito looks back and glares at Naruto before leaving. Nice job Naruto. Knew you would win. Said Yang as she and Ruby walked over. Thanks Yang. Said Naruto. Yeah it was really cool seeing you use your spellcaster deck. You don't use it too often. Said Ruby. I know Ruby. But with how rare most of the cards are in that deck, I don't like to use it too often. Said Naruto. While Naruto spoke with his sisters, Naomi looked on with a small glare at the two girls. Naruto should be talking to me and our siblings like that. If only we hadn't pushed him out like we did then he would be with us right now. Thought Naomi. After the duel, the trip to Duel Academy was uneventful. Naruto met up with Cirrus, Ben, Rex and Izuku, with the five becoming fast friends. An hour later the yacht made it to Duel Academy. The students got off the yacht and made their way from the docks to the island. However, as soon as Naruto set one foot on the island an energy that only he could feel flowed into him. The island shook and the volcano bellowed out smoke, with the students becoming worried that the volcano was about to erupt, but Naruto knew better. Naruto's eyes changed for a second from blue to silver and gold, then back with him smirking all the same. Bubal. Are they? Asked Naruto. Yes, Naruto. They are here. We found them. Said Yubal as she too smirked. Haha. <laughs> Good. The sacred beasts will be with their rightful duelist again in time. How long will I have to remain on the island till they are purged of the corruption done to them by the light? Asked Naruto. I would say the whole year Naruto. Your dark powers will purge them of the corrupted light, but it will take time. Until then you must remain on the island until the corruption is gone. Said Yubal. Agreed. That accursed light was the reason why my sons had to fight me years ago and corrupted the ten-tailed beast as well. But this time we will be ready for it when it returns. Said Kagaya. Agreed. This time, the light will fall to the gentle darkness. Ashura, Hayu with their powers together the light of corruption will fall to our might. I will make sure of it. Thought Naruto. The island finally stopped shaking and the teachers were able to calm the students down so that they could get to the auditorium. But beneath the island three powerful cards felt the energy of their king and began to smile. They can feel their king was on the island and they couldn't wait for him to find them and take them with him. For now they would wait until he would come. Naruto still had a grin on his face as he walked to where the chancellor would give his speech for the new and returning students. Naruto just found out that the sacred beasts, three beings of great power from one of his past lives, are here on the island. I can't believe it. What are the odds that they would be here? I mean we have been looking for them for eight years and they were here the whole time. Thought Naruto. It is amazing that they are here. I am sorry that I couldn't find them before Naruto. Said Yubal. It's fine Yubal. You didn't know and I don't blame you for not knowing. It had been thousands of years since you last saw them, so it was understandable why you couldn't find them. Thought Naruto. Naruto is right Yubal. It wasn't your fault. What matters now is that we found them and that we retrieve them once they are safe to get. Said Kagaya. Naruto nods his head in agreement. There was nothing that could be done for the sacred beasts right now. They are still suffering due to the corruption done by the evil light thousands of years earlier. The good news was that the corruption has died down over the years, but now with Naruto on the island, the corruption will fade within a year of him being on the island. Naruto wanted to find them sooner, and he looked all over the nations for them, but after the year-long search Naruto, Yubal and once Kagaya had joined them, they agreed that the beasts weren't in the nations and left. 
Naruto, Yang and Ruby walked to where the auditorium was and waited for the speech to begin. While Chancellor Shepard spoke Naruto tuned most of it out thinking about the beasts and more importantly the day that he met Yubel. Flash back eight years ago Konoha. Naruto was in his room looking at the only three cards that he had left. Two of them were the family cards that he got from his parents years ago, both starting to show signing of degrading due to neglect and the Kayubi no Yoko card that was connected to him because his father. Just yesterday he beat his brother Menma in a fair duel, but his mother had taken his cards away from him when Menma complained that Naruto had cheated. Right now he could hear the sounds of a party going on downstairs for his siblings for today was their birthday. That's not fair. Today is my birthday too. But they don't care or remember. I don't get it. Why do they do this to me? Cried young Naruto. Naruto felt a presence by his side and saw the Kayubi no Yoko sitting by his lap. I am sorry kid. This shouldn't happen to anyone, let alone you. Said Kurama. Thanks Kurama and Ayasin. Said Naruto as he hugged the dual spirit. Kurama had been Naruto's friend for years now, ever since some of his powers came back to him. When Kurama was forced to attack Konoha, Minato had to seal away most of the Kayubi's power into other cards to stop him. Kurama had his power sealed into five different cards, with his soul card going to Naruto and his power going to the other Uzumaki Namika's children. Naomi got the four-tailed card, Naruko, and Natsumi both got a two-tailed card, while Menma got the one-tailed card. Kurama had been growing in strength since then, but wasn't at full power at this time. Just then a loud cheer came from downstairs that got both of their attention. Kurama perked up his ears and growled. Naruto looked to his friend with a sad yet knowing look. They gave away my birthright didn't they? Said Naruto as that wasn't a question but a statement. Kurama didn't say anything because he didn't need to. Naruto already knew. Naruto began to chuckle a hollow laugh. He chuckled until it turned to quite sobbing. Kurama could do nothing but try to help his friend. Just then a dark presence was felt in Naruto's room. Why do you cry little one? Asked a voice. Who are you? Come out. I won't let you hurt Naruto. Yelled Kurama. Hello Kurama. It has been a long time. Said the voice as she appeared in front of the two. Kurama widened his eyes when he saw her. Yubel what are you doing here? I haven't seen you since the Supreme King died years ago. Said Kurama. I went into a deep sleep, waiting for my king to return. Said Yubel. Then why are you here? Asked Kurama. Yubel smirks. Why do you think? Kurama widens his eyes again and begun to laugh. Haha. <laughs> oh this is too good to hear. That old fool of a toad downstairs thinks that the other brats are more important than Naruto when he is the most important one of them all. Laughed Kurama. Naruto had been silent for all of this and was wondering who this dual spirit was. Um, excuse me. Who are you? Asked Naruto. Yuba looked at Naruto with a small smile on her face. She then placed a hand on his head. I think this will help you, my king. Said Yuba. Naruto was then shown images from a time long past. Naruto then looked at Yubel and smiled. I am sorry Yubel. I should have known you right away. Said Naruto. There is no need for that my king. You had reincarnated so you had lost your memories. But what matters is that you know or remember. Plus, I have a present for you. Said Yubel. Then in Yubel's hand a dark energy swirled and from it came a deck of dual monster cards and handed them to Naruto. Naruto looked at the cards and felt a connection to them. Like they were old friends now reunited after so long. He smiled when he realized that these cards were his from his past life. It's good to see you all once again. Said Naruto as the dual spirits in the cards cheered out at their returned king. So Kit. What are you going to do now? Asked Kurama. Naruto smiled at his friend. What do you think partner? We talked about this for months now. We both made the decision to leave. Few in the village care for me and most of my family don't even see me as one of their own. There is very little reason to stay. Then let's go. The sooner we leave the better. Almost everyone is focused on the party downstairs right now. You won't get a better chance than now. Said Kurama. Kurama is right my king. Plus, we should look for the sacred beasts, your greatest warriors. We will need their strength in the future. Said Yubel. Naruto nods his head and grabs what little he owns and packs his bag. He climbs out the window and disappears into the village and then beyond it. His door opened an hour after Naruto left, since Naomi wanted to give her brother her gift to him. Naruto Niasen. I have. Naruto. Asked Naomi when she saw that Naruto wasn't in his room like she thought. She looked around but couldn't find her brother. She frowned at that. Maybe he went into the village. I wouldn't blame him if he did. I guess I will give him his gift later. Said Naomi as she walked back downstairs to rejoin the party. But unknown to her she wouldn't see her brother again for eight years and by that time he wouldn't be her brother ever again. Flashbacks ends. Naruto was taken out of memory lane when Shepard ended his speech and the students began to walk to the dorms. 
as they walked Naruto talked with some of them. So what do you think of Duel Academy so far? Asked Naruto. Looks great. I can see why this place was high up in the charts for a school. On an island far away from the world and we can study without anyone getting in the way. Said Ben. Agreed amigo. I look forward to all the duels I can get into here. Said Rex. I plan on going pro once I graduate. My friend said that they wanted to help me with that dream. Said Izuku. Oh? How so? Asked Ben. Well, my friend Achako wants to be my business manager, while Tsai wants to be my publicist and help me find people to duel once I go pro. Said Izuku. Naruto grins at Izuku. And the fact that both of your friends are girls doesn't change anything about it. Ben and Rex grin at Izuku as the little green team blushes and tries to deny anything that they are thinking. As they walk the group talked about what they wanted to be later in life, with most wanting to go pro or in Ben's case, he wanted to be like his grandfather and wanted to be a dual police officer working with the plumber organization. With the rise in crimes using dual monsters, either with psychic duelists to rare hunters, dual police officers were needed more and more often. Rex was the same way and wanted to enter the Providence Agency that his brother and parents are with. The Providence Agency, much like the Plumbers, are a group that combats criminals all over the world. The Plumbers work mainly in the America and Providence work mainly in Europe, Africa and parts of Asia, mostly Russia. The group of Slifers finally made it to their dorms and they were not impressed. This is our dorm. It's an outhouse with a deck. Yelled one of the Slifers. Naruto chuckled, but he went up on the deck and was amazed by the beautiful side of the ocean. It's not all bad guys. Look at this view. Said Naruto. Yang, Ruby and the others gathered onto the deck and they all agreed that Naruto was right. The view was beautiful. The group then went to their rooms. Ruby and Yang shared a room on the second floor. Ben, Rex and Izuku were on the first floor in the same room, while Naruto and Cirrus were placed in a room with an overweight teen named Chumley Huffington, whom Cirrus thought was a giant cola. Naruto then had to go meet up with Shepard for his job while on the island. Naruto knocked on the door to the Chancellor's office. Enter. Yelled Shepard. Naruto walks in with a smile on his face. Hey Shepard. Been a while since we last met. Said Naruto. Shepard smiled when he saw Naruto. Ah Naruto. It is good to see you again. I haven't seen you in a year. Not since you won that tournament in Kyoto. Said Shepard. Yep. Had fun in that one. And remember Shepard it was a draw. Said Naruto. Tuckle. True but your opponent didn't accept it and said that you had won the match. Said Shepard. Sigh. But I don't consider it my win. I understand why she thinks that she lost, but she was a great duelist. I just wish I could find her again to challenge her to a rematch. But talking about the past is not why I am here. Said Naruto as he got serious. Shepard also became serious. I was told by Mr. Kaiba about your job and I agree with him. I too want to find out what happened to those students. So I am not going to have any interference from you then? Asked Naruto. Not from me. But I can't say anything about the other teachers. I don't want too many to know about this. But I will defend you should it come to it. I also have some notes and documents that could help you find out what happened to the students. Said Shepard. Naruto grabs the notes and documents and places them in his bag. Shepard then gives Naruto an all-access pass on his PDA to allow him to any area on the island. So long as he doesn't abuse it. Naruto thanked Shepard and left the office and decided to walk around the island to get his bearings. While walking he found himself near what he thought was the boy's blue dorm but was really the girl's blue dorm. Hey. Yelled a voice. Naruto turned to look and saw a large group of girls glaring at him. What do you think you are doing here? Asked a girl with white hair. I was just walking around. I am going to guess that this is the girl's blue dorm going by the blue clothes and the angry glares that I am getting from you girls. Said Naruto. Yes it is. And do you honestly think that we believe that you were just walking around and just happened to come here? Asked the girl. Naruto glared at the girl. I am not a pervert if that is what you are thinking. I hate those fools. Most of the girls flinched when Naruto spoke since he said it with such hate that it you could feel it. Just then Alexis, Naomi, Jasmine and Mindy walked over to the group. Jasmine saw that it was Naruto and smiled. Oh hey. It's you. You're the guy that helped me with Jax and Nito. I wanted to say thanks. Said Jasmine. Naruto smiles at the redhead. You're welcome. The girls calmed down after that, but the white-haired girl was still wary around Naruto. Just then a dual spirit came near Naruto and whispered in his ear. The only ones who noticed other than Naruto however, were Naomi, Alexis, Jasmine and Mindy. The spirit looked like a beast clad in armor of Rome. Naruto growled and turned. What is your problem? Asked the white-haired girl. We have company coming. Said Naruto. And like he said a large group of obelisk boys were walking towards them. 
Naruto could tell that they were here to show off and try to impress the girls, but they also were glaring at him as well. Naruto could also tell that the girls were in no mood for the boy's attempts. The boy in the lead, a boy with black spiky hair, walked closer to get near Alexis and Naomi. Herodes, Yuzumaki. Is this loser Sly for bothering you? I can make him leave if you want. Said the boy. Need a chaz. Nothing you say or do will make me swoon for you. Said Naomi. Naruto chuckles under his breath at that. Naomi would say that to all the fanboys she had back in Konoha. Oh way Chaz. We were enjoying a nice conversation when you guys showed up. Said Alexis. Chaz growls in anger at that. But he keeps his cool and turns to Naruto. Why don't you beat it Slifer Slacker? You aren't in any of these girls league. Said Chaz. That is not up to you Chaz. If I want to pursue a girl I would at least be respectful to them, unlike what you and the other boys with you right now are doing. Said Naruto. The girls nod their heads at Naruto in thanks. The boys however growl at him. Hey you punk. You need to respect us. We are in the blue dorm while you are just a slacker. Yelled Jax. And yet I beat you and your dorm head in one turn. So tell me. Why should I respect you? Asked Naruto with a glare. The boys sweated at the glare. Well most of them. Chaz glared right back which impressed Naruto a bit. Fine then. I challenge you to a duel. If I win then you leave and begin to respect your betters. Said Chaz. And if I win, you and the other boys leave and stop looking down at me and the others. Said Naruto. Whatever. Now get your duel disc ready. Said Chaz. Naruto grabbed a deck from his belt and placed it into his duel disc. While this was happening Naomi was curious as to which deck he was going to use. The two got ready and started up their discs. Duel. Yelled the two. Chaz LP. 8000 Naruto LP. 8000. I'll go first. I play a reborn zombie in attack mode and place a face down to start. Said Chaz. Reborn zombie ATK 1000 def 1600. Naruto drew a card from his deck. Finally. Someone with a bit of brains in them. You actually placed a card in the spell trap zone to protect yourself. Said Naruto. The girls chuckled while Jax lowered his head and Crowler sneezed in his office. Okay, for my first move I play the field spell Colosseum Cage of the Gladiator Beasts. Said Naruto as the area changed to a massive rock colosseum. Next I play Gladiator Beast Liquori in attack mode. Then I special summon Test Tiger in attack mode as well. A torch of fire is shown to ignite on top of the colosseum. Gladiator Beast Liquori ATK 1900 def 500. Test Tiger ATK 600 def 300. Now let's start the battle phase. I have Liquori attack your zombie, but first I special summon another monster called Gladiator Beast Vespasius in attack mode. Said Naruto. When Vespasius appeared on the field another torch on the Colosseum lit up and the two gladiators grew stronger. Gladiator Beast Liquori ATK 2000 Def 600. Gladiator Beast Vespasius ATK 2500 Def 200. Naruto's flaming tiger warrior ripped apart Chaz's zombie with ease. Then Vespasius and Test Tiger went up the Chaz and did more damage to him with Chaz grunting in pain. Chaz LP. 3900. Chaz glared at Naruto as half his life points went down in just one move. But it got worse as Naruto continued his turn. I now return Liquori to my deck and summon Gladiator Beast Besterai in attack mode. Said Naruto. Liquori went back to Naruto's deck and a bird-like monster took his place and another torch lit up in the Colosseum. Gladiator Beast Besterai ATK 1800 Def 1100. Gladiator Beast Vespasius ATK 2600 Def 300. I then use Besterai's effect and destroy your face down card. Said Naruto. Taz growls as his face down card was destroyed. I then place two cards face down and end my turn. Said Naruto. Wow. He is good. Said the white haired girl. But he is wise. This is actually the first time that he didn't one shot his opponent. Said Alexis. Naomi was shocked to see her brother use another deck. She was now even more worried about the duel that she was going to have in two days. It was bad enough that Naruto got the hero cards back after they were taken from him years ago, but now his skills have gotten even better than when they were children. She shook her head at that. No. I will beat Naruto. I will get him back as my brother. I will be a part of his life as I should have when we were younger. Thought Naomi. Alexis, Jasmine and Mindy saw Naomi shake her head and wondered why she did that. Ever since Naomi first saw Naruto at Ikaiba Dome, she had been acting weird. They make a mental note to ask her about it later. Jazz growled as he drew his card. He needed something to turn the duel, but he didn't have anything, yet. He looked at the card in hand and grins. Okay, slacker. My turn and I start by summoning my dark blade in attack mode and equip him with a black pendant. Said Chaz. The warrior covered in black armor appeared on Chaz's field with a pendant around his neck. But he won't be staying. 
I now use the spell double summon, and then I send all the cards in my hand to the grave, and sacrifice my dark blade to summon infernal incinerator. Yelled Chaz. The warrior disappears, and a black energy hits Naruto with a demon-like monster appears on Chaz's field. Naruto LP. 7500. Infernal incinerator ATK 3400 def 1800. Naruto looked at the beast and wasn't impressed. Chaz grinned and planned to attack but was stopped. I play threading roar. I stop your attack phase this turn. Said Naruto. Chaz growls. Fine. I will get you next turn. Naruto draws a card. I doubt it. First I sacrifice my test tiger to summon gladiator beast Spartacus in attack mode. Said Naruto. The dinosaur monster appears where the tiger once was and roared at Chaz. Gladiator beast Spartacus ATK 2500 def 1900. Next I send both Besterai and Vespasius to the deck to summon from my extra deck Jizarus in attack mode. Said Naruto. Both monsters glowed and with Vespasius entering Besterai and the monster in question began to grow and become stronger. Another torch ignites on the Colosseum, making it four in question. Infernal Incinerator ATK 3200 def 1800. Gladiator Beast Spartacus ATK 2600 def 2000. Gladiator Beast Jizarus ATK 2800 def 1900. And when Jizarus is summoned to the field I can destroy up to two cards anywhere in the field. And with his effect I destroy your monster. Yelled Naruto. No. Shouted Chaz. He watched as his powerful beast was taken down by the winged gladiator with ease leaving him wide open. Yes. Now Spartacus, Jizarus. Rush him and take him down. Gladiatorial ramage. Yelled Naruto. The winged beast and the armored dinosaur rushed forward and brought their weapons down on Chaz bring his life points reach zero. Chaz LP. Zero Naruto wins. Naruto grins and then says something that not many understand. Hey Victus. Said Naruto in Latin. Chaz and the other blues couldn't believe this. This slacker was beating them with ease. Now since I won, it would be time for you boys to leave. And trust me, you don't want me to make you. Said Naruto as he glared at the obelisk boys. The boys sweated and ran off. Chaz and Nito glare at Naruto as they run off but continue to run away. Thanks for that. I have to say that was impressive. Most don't use the gladiator beasts. Said Alexis. True but that is why I use them. Since most don't use them they don't know how to fight against them said Naruto. True. And I wish to apologize to you for my actions when you first arrived. Said Weiss. It's fine. I can understand why you would be wary of me. Not every guy out there is nice. Well I will see you ladies around. I need to head back for dinner. Said Naruto. Naruto began to walk away, but before he left, Naruto walked close to Naomi. He turned to her and said. Hey Vinonis Est. Naomi began to sweat in fear when she heard that. She watched as her brother walked away, and she widened her eyes when she saw a dual spirit looking back at her. The spirit is of a demonic woman with bat-like wings and a third eye on her forehead. Naomi almost began to hyperventilate when she saw the spirit. No, no, no. It can't be. He can't be him. Why? Naruto can't be him. Thought Naomi. The memory of when she was eight surfaced in her mind. It had been six months since Naruto ran away from Konoha. She and her siblings were with Yurei in the land of Waterfall for a small training trip when the sky blackened and an oppressive aura gripped the area. That is when her group heard the sounds of a duel going on and they ran off to find out what was going on. When they reached the area where the duel was taking place, they found a girl with mint green hair, dueling a person in a black and white outfit dueling and beating her. On the girl's side of the field was one of the nine biju cards, the seven-tailed beetle, and she was down to 600 LP. The boy had 2500 LP and summoned a card that scared Naomi, her siblings and Jurea to this day. The evil hero Bloodbane. The polar opposite to elemental hero Lectrum. The evil hero was able to overpower the mighty beast and made the girl lose her duel. The boy walked over and took the Biju card from her, but he also apologized to her as he did it. When the boy noticed the Kanoha group he grinned at them. And said these words. Hey Vinonis Est. After he said those words the boy disappeared in a black flash of light with a female demonic dual spirit behind him and was no longer seen. Naomi and her group ran over to the girl to see if she was okay. The girl now know as Fu cried when she lost her card as the Biju was her friend. Ureya told Minato of this when they returned to Kanoha days later as this was the next sighting of a mysterious duelist, no only as Null. Null had been active for months now and was taking the Biju cards from the wielders by his right as the winner of the duel. No one was able to find him since Null just appears quickly, duels, wins and disappears before anyone can track him. Naomi remembers the dark energy coming off Null and Bloodbane. She didn't want to know how someone could give off that kind of energy, but now she had some realization as to how he did. Did, did we create Null? Did our actions make Naruto like that? Thought Naomi. 
She shook her head and focused on where Naruto was walking. I will find out. And if we did make him like that, then I will fix this. We shouldn't have pushed him out of our lives. I may not be able to change the past, but I will make a better future with Naruto in it. I promise. Thought Naomi. Naomi walked to her room to plan to beat Naruto to start the healing the rift that was made between the two of them and the family. Her soul and heart had to be fully in this duel if she wanted to win and beat Naruto. She now knew that and was determined to win to get her brother back. Slifer dorm. Naruto made his way to the dorm for dinner with everyone in the main area for food. Naruto saw that the food was lackluster to say the least. He then noticed that their dorm head wasn't in the room, but there was a fat cat where the dorm head was supposed to be. Naruto walked over to his sisters and saw that they were talking with another girl with dark black hair and was about as tall as Ruby. Hey girls. How have you been? Asked Naruto. Hey bro. It's been okay so far. I was hoping for better food thou. Said Ruby. Yeah I get ya. So, who is this? Asked Naruto as he looked to the other girl who blushed at Naruto's looks. Oh, this is Blair Flanagan and our roommate. Blair this is our brother Naruto. Said Yang. Naruto smiles at the girl. Nice to meet you Blair. I hope that my sisters are treating you right. Blair smiles and nods her head. Yeah they are great. I am glad to have them as roommates. Yang then play glared at Naruto. And what do you mean that we are treating her right? We are always on our best behavior. Aha. Uh -huh. What about the time you punched a guy through a wall when he accidentally touched your hair? Asked Naruto. Yang looked away at that as she almost got into real trouble for that one. And how about the time that Ruby broke into a bakery and ate all the cookies in five minutes? Asked Naruto as he deadpanned at Ruby. Ruby nervously chuckled at that. Hey, give her a break. She was 10 and was grounded by her dad from her cookies for three weeks because of a bad report card. She needed her cookie fix. Blair chuckles at the sisters. Just then a tall man walks into the main area. Hello children. My name is Professor Lyman Banner, head of the Slifer dorm and teacher of fusion. I am glad to see everyone is here now so that we can eat. I know that the food here is not the best, but Crowler made a point to say that this was an initiative to have each of you try hard to move up in rank. Said Lyman. Naruto growled. Damn bastard. He has no right to do this. He whispered. But that is for another time. For now dig into the food. Said Lyman. Naruto grabbed his food and was about to eat when everyone heard a sound. Bark. Everyone stopped. Naruto was wide-eyed and slowly turned his head to his sister. Yang was wide-eyed as well as she looked to Ruby who looked like a child with her hand in the cookie jar. Miss Rose. What was that? Asked Lyman. Uh? Nothing. Asked Ruby as she held her stomach that seemed to be moving. Bark. Then why is your stomach barking? Asked Lyman. Oh I'm just hungry. That is just how my stomach growls when it's hungry. Said Ruby as she tries to hide what is inside of her clothes. Ruby you suck at lying and let him out. Yelled Naruto. But before Ruby could try to deny anything, Zue popped his head out from Ruby's clothes like a Zenimer from the movie Aliens. Zue looked around with a smile on his face. Bark. The room was silent. You could hear a pin fall from the obelisk girl's dorm. Ruby looks down and whispers. Get back in my shirt. Ruby. Yelled Naruto and Yang. And so the day ends on the first day of Duel Academy. One thing could be said about this year. It won't be forgotten for a long time. Naruto had just finished chewing Ruby out for smuggling's way onto the island and for almost getting herself expelled for the act. The good news is that Shepard allowed Zwei to stay so long as he behaved himself and that Ruby kept her grades up. Zue was a major hit to the Slifer dorm and even got along with Pharaoh the cat that Professor Banner was on hand with him at all time. Zue would alternate rooms each night and stay with Ruby, Yang and Blair one night and stay with Naruto, Cirrus and Chumley the next night. The next day. Naruto was in class listening to the class and writing notes. He was currently in Crowler's class and Naruto had been twitching his eye since the fourth sentence uttered by the gender-confused human. Crowler praises his blues for getting correct answers on super easy questions that a rookie to the game can't understand, but insults the reds for getting questions that only high-ranked duelists would understand. This bastard shouldn't be a teacher to a pack of mice. He favors one group but hates the rest. He is an insult to teachers everywhere. Thought Naruto. We agree with you Naruto. How this fool got this job is beyond me. Said Yubel. I may not have been the best mother in my life, but I didn't favor one of my sons over the other. Crowler needs to be punished said Kagaya. For now all that we can do is just deal with it until the time comes that we can make him pay for his stupidity. Thought Naruto. For the rest of the morning Naruto listened to the teachers as they taught their classes. When the afternoon came around he and the rest of the first years went over to the gymnasium for gym class. Their teacher is a woman by the name of Fonda Fontaine. Most of the guys in the first year were blushing at the impressive figure that Miss Fontaine had. 
with a few boys muttering that they wouldn't mind trying to date her. Naruto rolled his eyes at how some were acting. But for some strange reason he felt a pull to her that he couldn't explain. He had the same pull to his friend Hinata Hayuga and a few blue girls like Alexis, Jasmine, Mindy, and a few others that he had met over the years. Naruto had done a great job in the class and was making his way to the locker room to find Cirrus reading something. Hey Cirrus. What do you have there? Asked Naruto. Cirrus jumped a bit when Naruto spoke up. He turned with the paper in his hand. Oh Naruto you scared me. I was reading this note that I found sticking out of your locker. Sorry about that, but it got my attention. Said Cirrus. Naruto chuckled. It's fine Cirrus. So what is it? I didn't have any paper in the locker when we got here. It's a love letter. And it is from Alexis. Said Cirrus as he handed the note. Naruto raised an eyebrow at that. He took the note and saw a few problems with the note right off the bat. One the letter looks like it was written in a hurry like the writer wanted this done quickly before class was over. Second there is no way that Alexis would write her own name wrong. Alexis's last name is Rhodes and the person who wrote this couldn't even get her name right since it said Alicus Rhodes. Seriously, if you're going to make a trap get your info right before you plan the trap. Only an idiot would fall for this. And finally Naruto knows that there is no way that Alexis would put on cologne. Naruto crumples the note and throws it into a trash bin. Ignore this Cirrus. This is just a poor plan to get me in trouble. It's a fake letter that someone made. Besides, Alexis and I have only known each other for less than two days. I doubt that she would gain a crush on me that quickly. Now come on. We have one last class before the day is done. Said Naruto as he walked out of the locker room. But Cirrus walked over to the trash bin and took the note out of it. He pocketed the note and walked out. I know that he said to ignore, but I need to make sure. I will head over to the girl's dorm tonight and ask her myself. Thought Cirrus. Late at night girl's bathhouse. The girls of the blue dorm were enjoying the water of the bathhouse after the long day that they had. I have to admit that Naruto from Slifer Red is a real enigma. He is a powerful duelist, but he shows little respect for the teachers. Said Weiss as she washed her arms. Not really. He only disrespects Crowler. And to be honest, Crowler kind of asks for it. Said Jasmine. True. Crowler has been known to insult the reds and yellows while praising the blues for everything. Naruto seems like the kind of person that wouldn't let someone get away with bullying anyone. Said Alexis. That may be true, but he is in Slifer. And he wouldn't be there for no reason. Said Mindy. Don't let the jacket fool you. Naruto is a genius in most things that he does. I even asked Miss Fontaine for the transcripts for the entrance exams. Naruto got a perfect score in everything. To be honest Naruto should have been in the raw dorm when he first got here. Said Naomi. Then why is he in the Slifer dorm? He has proven that he is a great duelist and if he scored so well then he wouldn't be in the Slifer dorm. Said Weiss. Isn't it obvious? Crowler is the one in charge of where a student goes after the entrance exam. And since Naruto humiliated Crowler in front of everyone. Said Naomi. Crowler put Naruto in the Slifer dorm as punishment. How petty. Said Alexis with a scowl on her face. The other girls nod their heads as well. Off to the side sat another girl with black hair and cat-like eyes. Her name is Blake Belladonna. Hey Naomi. Said Blake. The other girls looked to their classmate with intrigue since she rarely spoke. What is your relationship to Naruto anyway? I have seen you look at him with eyes like that of longing and grief. Is he an ex-boyfriend or something? Naomi blushed at that and shook her head. No. No Naruto is not my ex-boyfriend or boyfriend either. She sighed as she began to remember her past with Naruto. Naruto Naruto is my brother. The other girls looked at Naomi in shock at that. Your brother but I thought that Menma was your only brother. Said Mindy. Naomi sighed as she sank into the water and looked to the selling. No. Naruto is my older brother that ran off years ago when he was eight. I will admit that his life back in Kanoha wasn't the best as it should have been. In the beginning Naruto lived a great life with us, but as time went on I don't know what happened, but something changed. Most of the family began to ignore him for some strange reason. I tried to be there for him, but it just wasn't meant to be I guess. Then when we turned 80 ran off on our birthday. Most of the girls looked at Naomi with sad looks on their faces. Did anyone try to look for him? Asked Jasmine. Naomi chuckled. Are you kidding me? Of course we looked. Kasan ran herself ragged for weeks trying to find him when we noticed that he was gone. She looked for him for so long that she almost died twice in her search for Naruto. Because of that we almost lost not only Kasan, but also Naruhi as well. Little Naruhi almost died. How? Asked Alexis. Mom was pregnant with Naruhi when Naruto went missing. When mom tried to look for Naruto she almost died doing so and endangered Naruhi by accident since she didn't know that she was pregnant. Said Naomi as she thought of her youngest sister. How did the rest of your family take it? Asked Weiss. 
Gusan was worried like no tomorrow. He sent out teams for months to try and find Naruto, and with each failing, he fell deeper and deeper into depression. He began to yell at himself for failing to be the father to Naruto that he should have been. Naruko cried for months while staying in Naruto's room, begging for Naruto to return home. Itsumi hid her emotions well, but I could tell that she was hating herself over what she had done to Naruto. Ka-san had it the worst with her having nightmare after nightmare of Naruto dying, and she is unable to save him. She does everything in her power to not make the same mistake with Naruhi, and prays every day that Naruto would come back safe and sound. Menma however didn't care about Naruto in the least. He was glad that Naruto was gone and, in his words, no longer shaming the family. Menma was smacked so hard in the ass by Ka-san that he couldn't sit for a month after he said that. Said Naomi. How are they doing now? Asked Mindy. They have tried to move forward, but other than Menma we all miss Naruto in our lives. Said Naomi. You haven't told them yet. With everything that you have told us I thought that you would have told them that you found Naruto already. Said Blake. Naomi chuckles at that. The thing is, I wanted to. But I wanted to speak with Naruto first before I did anything. But my greatest fear became a reality in that Naruto doesn't want anything to do with me or our family. He sees his adoptive sisters as his real sisters and sees his adoptive parents as his real parents. And to be honest I don't blame him. We pushed him out of our lives. But Naruto and I have a wager in place. Tomorrow he and I will duel, and should I win he will try to reconnect with our family. But what happens if you lose? What then? Asked Blake. Naomi frowns at that. Then I have to accept that he wants nothing to do with me or our family. And I can't tell my family that he is here on the island. That is why I can't lose this duel. I will beat my brother and get him back. I have to. Before the girls could ask more, another girl cried out. Eek. It's a boy. Yelled a girl. Every girl snapped their heads to the window to see a boy with light blue hair looking in. The girls scrambled to their feet, ran to their clothes, put them on, and ran out to find Cirrus on the ground trying to run away. Cirrus. What the hell are you doing here? Asked Naomi. Cirrus was on the ground while not looking at the angry glares of the girls. I came here to ask Alexa something said Cirrus. Alexis raised an eyebrow. Ask me what? Cirrus took out the note from his pocket. I found this earlier today after gym class. I want to know if you wrote this. Alexis took the note and read it. She grew angry that someone had tried to use her in some manner. She then tore the note up. Sorry Cirrus. But this note is a fake. My name isn't even written right and I don't use cologne. Plus, this note was meant for Naruto. Said Alexis. Cirrus sighs at that. He should have listened to Naruto about this. So what are we going to do with Cirrus? He did enter the girls' dorms after curfew and saw us in the bath. Said Blake. But how did he get in? The main entrance has a guard, and, no offense Cirrus, there is no way that he has the skills to get this far. Said Jasmine. Cirrus just wanted to sink into the ground at that, but he couldn't deny it. He got in because someone broke the lock to the back entrance. Said Weiss. She came over with a broken lock in her hands. I found this on the ground, and Cirrus didn't have any bolt cutters. What is a bolt cutter? Asked Cirrus. I rest my case. Said Jasmine and Weiss. Most of the girls were talking about telling the teachers on Cirrus, while others say that they should just let him go, since this was clearly someone playing a prank on him and them. Alexis then had an idea enter her head. I have a great idea. Said Alexis with a grin. What is it? Asked Mindy. We use Cirrus as bait to bring Naruto here. Once he gets here I will duel him for Cirrus's freedom. I have been wanting to test Naruto's skills as a duelist since the entrance exams. Said Alexis. The other girls agree that it was a good idea. Okay, I will contact Naruto and tell him that Cirrus is here. Said Naomi as she got her PDA and called up Naruto. Slifer dorm. Naruto had just walked out of the bathroom with only pants on. Naruto walked over to his closet to get a shirt when he heard his PDA going off. Naruto picked up the PDA to see Naomi calling him. Curious he answered the video call. What is it Naomi? Asked Naruto. Naomi blushed at seeing Naruto without his shirt on, and she could hear a few girls behind her swooning at the sight. Why don't you have a shirt on? Yelled Naomi. Naruto raised an eyebrow. I just got out of the shower. Now do you need something, or did you just call to see me without my shirt on? He asked with a smirk on his face. Naomi blushed so much that she matched her hair as did some of the other girls. Yes I called for a reason. Naruto, we found Sira sneaking around the girl's blue bathhouse. We captured him for his actions. Said Naomi. Sira did what it were. Yelled Naruto. Naomi jumped at the shout as did a few slifers who were trying to sleep. Sira is here at the girl's blue bathhouse. If you want him back then you need to get over here and duel Alexis for his freedom. Be here in an hour. And come through the back entrance, Mindy will be waiting for you. 
said Naomi. She then ended the call. Damn it Cirrus. I told you that note was a fake. Why didn't you listen to me? Asked Naruto as he put his shirt on and walked out of the dorm room. Naruto ran into the night towards the girl's dorm to get Cirrus out of the lioness's den. An hour later girl's dorm. Naruto made his way to the back entrance of the girl's dorm and found Mindy waiting for them. The thing is she had a blush on her face when she saw Naruto. Hello Mindy. Did you enjoy the view? Asked Naruto with a grin on his face. Mindy blushed harder at that, but then coughed. Ahem. I am glad that you are here, follow me the others are waiting. Naruto nods his head and follows Mindy to a clearing to find Alexis, Naomi and the rest of the blue girls waiting for him. Most blushed brightly when they saw Naruto which got him to grin. Naomi tried to glare at the girls, but her own blush made it impossible. I see that you came Naruto, good. Said Alexis. Here I am. Now where is Cirrus? Asked Naruto. The girls parted and showed Cirrus and he looked down to the ground. Cirrus, seriously. What are you thinking? I told you that the note was fake. And did you really need to ask Alexis in the middle of the night? You couldn't wait till morning to ask her. Don't be like most of the morons in the blue dorm and use your head. No offense girls. Said Naruto. None taken. Said the girls since they knew Naruto was talking about the boys. Sorry Naruto. But you have to admit that if I tried to ask Alexis in the morning, then the boys of the blue dorm wouldn't let me get within five feet of her or any girl from the blue dorm for that matter. Said Cirrus. Naruto sighed since that was true. The boys, mainly Nito and his group, have been a major pain for the everyone who wanted to talk to the girls. And it's not like they were going to ask them out, but some just wanted some help with certain things that the girls knew. And the girls actually want to help the other dorms, for the most part. Fine I will give you that. But tomorrow we will have a talk about using your brain before you move your feet. Said Naruto. Cirrus nods his head in defeat. So girls. What do I have to do to get Cirrus out of here without you telling the teachers? Asked Naruto. Alexa steps forward with a smile on her face. Simple. You just have to defeat me in a duel. Do that and you and your friend are allowed to leave. Said Alexis. Deal. Show me where this duel is going to take place. Said Naruto. Alexa smiled and brought him to a boat and the two went onto the lake. Nice spot Alexis. A full moon lit night on a clear lake. If I didn't know any better I would say that this was a date. Said Naruto with a wide grin. Alexis blushes when Naruto says that. It also didn't help that an image of her and Naruto in a boat smiling and sitting close to each other entered her mind. Naomi had a tick mark on her head when she heard her brother flirt with her friend. Alexis shakes her blush off and readies for the duel. I want you to come at me with everything that you have. Said Alexis. Wouldn't have it any other way. Said Naruto. Alexis. LP 8000 Naruto. LP 8000. Duel. Said Alexis and Naruto. As they say, ladies first. Said Naruto. What a gentleman. Said Alexis as she drew from her deck. I play a card face down, and then I will play a Toil Cyber in attack mode. The Toil Cyber 4 ATK 1200 Def 1600. Your turn Naruto. Said Alexis. Thanks. Said Naruto. He draws his card and smirks. I first show you this card which will let me special summon another from my hand. Naruto shows the card to Alexis, and when she sees it she pales at the card. Blue Eyes White Dragon. I now summon Blue Eyes Alternative White Dragon in attack mode said Naruto. Blue Eyes Alternative White Dragon 8 ATK 3000 Def 2500. The large white dragon roared as it appeared on the field. The girls couldn't believe that Naruto had the Blue Eyes cards as well as the Dark Magician cards. Just what cards doesn't he have? Naomi was now hyperventilating. She was really beginning to believe that she had no chance of beating her brother. Heroes, spellcasters, gladiator beasts and now Blue Eyes, how is she supposed to fight her brother if she doesn't know what deck he is going to use? Naomi shook her head trying to banish those thoughts. No kami damn it. I will not give up. I lost him once I will not lose him again. I don't care if he has the fucking god cards in his possession, I will get him back as my brother. Yelled Naomi in her head. It's still my turn Alexis. I now play the ritual card chaos form. I sacrifice the blue eyes in my hand to summon to the field, blue eyes chaos dragon. Said Naruto. The blue scaled dragon roars as it appears on the field. The air crackled with energy as the mighty dragon came down to the field. The two dragons looked to each other and nod their heads. Blue Eyes Chaos Dragon 8 ATK 3000 Def Zero. Alexis was sweating a bit at seeing the great dragons. Crowler, who was wearing a wetsuit and was hidden in the water nearby, was wide-eyed at seeing the legendary dragons. Sido Kaiba was the only known person who uses Blue Eyes White Dragons and their other counterparts. So seeing them here almost made him have a heart attack. Battle Phase. Blue Eyes Alternative White Dragon, Attack a Toil Cyber. Yelled Naruto. 
The dragon opened its mouth and blasts at Alexis's monster. But the blast moved towards Alexis. I activate my trap card double pass. It changes your monster's attack to a direct attack and will let me have my monster attack you directly as well. Yelled Alexis. Alexis grunted when she was hit with the blast of the dragon. Naruto was then kicked in the head by a toil cyber, but he didn't move from the impact, having felt worse from his duels in the nations. Alexis 5000 LP. Naruto 6200 LP. Naruto smirked at Alexis. I am impressed Alexis. Most would never sacrifice their own life points to save their monster. But you seem to have forgotten about my other monster, and he still has his effect to play. What do you mean? Asked Alexis. She was then shocked to see her monster switch to defense mode and was even more worried when her monster's defense went down to zero. Blue Eyes Chaos Dragon's effect lets me switch your monster to either defense or attack mode before he attacks, while also reducing the affected monster's attack or defense points to zero. And the best part is the turn that he is summoned, his attack inflicts piercing damage. Said Naruto with a grin. Alexis is wide eye at that and had to hold onto the boat when Blue Eyes Chaos Dragon blasted her toil cyber to smithereens. Alexis 2000 LP. The girls were shocked to see this happening to one of their best, while Crowler was about to have a heart attack at seeing one of his prize blues being beaten so easily. I have to admit that you are doing well Alexis. You have done more damage than anyone else so far in this school. Said Naruto as he placed a card face down. Your move. Alexis grits her teeth in a little bit of anger. She had hoped that she could at least keep her life points up a bit more, but Naruto had brought her down to more than half with ease and in one turn. She is just grateful that he didn't one-shot her like he did to Crowler or Jax. Alexis drew from her deck and sighed when she saw the card in her hand. Okay first up I play Swords of Revealing Light. I am sure that you know what this does. Said Alexis. Of course. For the next three turns I am not able to attack with my monsters. Said Naruto. Okay, I now play Warrior returning alive to get a Toil Cyber back, but she won't be staying since I play Polymerization to fuse her and my Blade Skater in my hand to fusion, summon my Cyber Blader in attack mode. Said Alexis. Cyber Blader 7 ATK 2100 Def 800. I now equip my Cyber Blader with fusion weapon to increase its attack by 1500. Said Alexis. Cyber Blader 7 ATK 3600 Def 800. Yeah. Go Alexis. Beat those dragons. Yelled Mindy. Come on girl. You can do it. Yelled Jasmine. Naomi watched as the duel continued. She knew that Alexis is a great duelist, but Naruto was at least two leagues ahead of everyone. She then widened her eyes when she saw Naruto grin just a bit. To most, many would miss it. Not Naomi. Alexis isn't going to win this. Said Naomi. What do you mean? Asked Blake. Yeah. Naruto's dragons are stopped for three more turns, and Alexis's monster is stronger than Naruto's dragons. How is she going to lose? Asked Weiss. Aren't you forgetting his face down card? Asked Naomi. The girls widened their eyes when they heard that. Now Cyberblader. Attack Blue Eyes Chaos Dragon. Yelled Alexis. Naruto grins as the skater-like monster came at his dragon. He was waiting for this. I activate my face down trap. I play the ultimate creature of destruction. This card will keep my Blue Eyes Chaos Dragon on the field and is an added bonus. Said Naruto. Cyber Blader went right up to the Great Beast and blasted it in the face. Chaos Dragon grunted in pain but wasn't destroyed. It then opened its mouth and fired a blast of white energy destroying Cyber Blader to dust. Your monster is destroyed by mine. Finished Naruto. Alexis was wide eye once again. One of her best monsters was destroyed, on her turn. She may have done damage to Naruto, but it was still nothing to what she had hoped to do. Naruto 5600 LP. Alexis looked at her hand and was now worried. She didn't have any monsters in her hand and had nothing to use to defend herself. She ended her turn with nothing on her side of the field. The other girls were surprised to be sure. Alexis is one of the better girls in the school, so to see her with nothing on her side of the field was really disconcerting. Prowler had almost drowned when he saw Alexis end her turn with nothing on her side of the field. Naruto drew a card from his deck and then placed it down in the spell trap zone on the field and then ended his turn. One of the Swords of Light died down when it became Alexis's turn as she drew her card. She was in a bind right now. She needed something anything to help her. She got a monster card called Cyber Gymnast, but it wouldn't be enough to fight off the dragons on Naruto's side of the field, but it might help her get rid of one of them at least. I play Cyber Gymnast in attack mode. Said Alexis. Cyber Gymnast 4 ATK 800 Def 1800. I then discard one card from my hand to destroy your Blue Eyes Chaos Dragon. Said Alexis. Naruto's monster was destroyed, but he just grinned at it. Blue Eyes' alternative white dragon was also grinning, even though his fellow monster was destroyed. 
He knew that Naruto would win. Impressive Alexis. Most impressive. I have no doubt that you will go far as a pro once you graduate. Complimented Naruto as he drew a card from his deck. Alexis blushed at the praise while a few girls were jealous of her. Naomi had her hair split into tail-like appendages as she watched as her brother flirt with her friend in jealousy. Weiss, Blake, Jasmine and Mindy took a few side steps away from Naomi, since they know the fury of an angry Uzumaki woman. But I will be ending this duel right here and now. First I play Pot of Greed to draw two cards. I now play Mystical Space Typhoon to destroy the Swords of Revealing Light card on your side. Said Naruto as his spell card that destroyed Alexis's spell with ease. I play Polymerization to fuse my Blue Eyes Alternative White Dragon with the other two in my hand, to fuse Blue Eyes Alternative Ultimate Dragon. The Blue Eyes Alternative White Dragon roared as it grew two more heads, and as it grew to a much larger dragon. Alexis and the other girls could only watch with a small amount of fear, as the great beast roared and shook the world around them. Blue Eyes Alternative Ultimate Dragon 12 ATK 4500 Def 3800. Alexis was completely wide-eyed at the monster in front of her. She had nothing in her deck that could combat this monster. But it was this moment that made her realize just how big the gap between her and Naruto, as well as the major leagues. A small smile graced her face when she learned this important lesson. You did well Alexis. For a long time few have been able to give me a good duel. I thank you for that. But it is time to end this duel so that Cirrus and I can head back to the dorms for the night. Blue Eyes Alternative Ultimate Dragon end this duel with Ultimate Burst Stream. Yelled Naruto. Blue Eyes Alternative Ultimate Dragon opened all three of its mouths and fired its powerful blast at Cyber Gymnast and tore right through her and blasted Alexis ending her life points to zero. Alexis 0 LP Naruto wins. Naruto and Alexis were now on the ground near the edge of the lake, with both smiling at each other. I mean what I said Alexis. You did very well against my Blue Eyes deck. Said Naruto. Thank you Naruto. But this duel showed me that I still have a long way to go before I can call myself a pro duelist. Said Alexis. We all have to realize that at some point. Once we do, we know what path we need to take to get to where we want to go to. Said Naruto. Alexis nods her head at that. She then blushed when Naruto took her hand and gave a kiss to her knuckles. Which got the other girls to swoon at the romantic act. Well, all but Naomi who was fuming in silence as she watched this happen in front of her. Thank you for the duel Miss Rhodes. I do look forward to the next one. Said Naruto with a grin on his face. He then turned and grabbed Cirrus by the back of his jacket and started to drag him to the Slifer dorms. Come on Cirrus. We have a lot to talk about. Okay I get it I need to think before I do something. Just let me go. Yelled Cirrus. Nope. This is part of your punishment. Said Naruto with a smirk on his face. The girls got a chuckle out of the scene as Naruto dragged Cirrus into the night back to their dorms. Naomi smiled when she saw that since Naruto did that to Menma all the time back home when Menma would get into trouble. At least Naruto did that before everything changed. The girls went to their rooms and went to bed soon after. Naomi remained awake on her bed for a short time as she wondered what her chances are in beating her brother tomorrow. By the looks of it, not well. But she will do her very best, she had to. The next day near sunset. Both Naruto and Naomi didn't speak with each other the entire day while in class with each other. The other students could feel the tension between the two. Even Cirrus could tell that something was wrong, and he was barely able to stay awake due to the long lecture that he got from Naruto the night before. But now it was time for their duel. Naomi was walking to the northern part of the island, the spot that Naruto himself picked. She wears a green combat uniform that was modeled after what her mother wore when she was a duelist shinobi for Konoha. Naomi also had a metal headband with the symbol of a leaf with a swirl around her head. On her left arm is a custom dual disc that was modified for those from the elemental nations. That looked like the ones used during the Domino City tournament years ago, but hers was red and black in color and has additional add-ons to it for dueling the nation's way. She made it to the spot where Naruto told her to meet him and she was shocked to see what he was wearing. Naruto wore a black and white outfit that was a combination of shinobi and samurai garments. His dual disc was like Naomi's but was black and white to match his look. Naruto also wore a mask over his face and had a metal headband over his head as well, but with a slash mark where the leaf and swirl was for his. So you have come. I thought for a moment that you had decided to not show up. Said Naruto. I wouldn't do that. This is my one chance to get you back and I will not let it go to waste. But I must admit this is a surprise, no. Said Naomi. Naruto grins when Naomi said that. I see that you figured it out. Good. Now prepare to face what you and your family have made Naomi. Come at me with everything that you have. I will. I will get you back Naruto. I will have my brother back in my life. Yelled Naomi. Dual disc on. Select deck leader. Yelled Naruto and Naomi. My deck leader is Red Eyes Black Dragon. 
Come forth my soul and protector. Yelled Naomi. Red Eyes Black Dragon appears next to Naomi and rubbed his head against her torso. Hoping to calm her down. I see that some things haven't changed. No matter. It will end the same. Said Naruto as he selected his deck leader. Come forth my eternal confidant. Yubel. Yelled Naruto. Yubel appeared like a phantom next to Naruto. She placed her hand on his shoulder and gave him a smile which he returned. Naomi gasped when she saw Yubel again. She was even more proof that Naruto is null. She may have known for a few days, but it still stung that Naruto would become like this. But that didn't matter right now. She had to win, to get her brother back, to fix her broken family. She had to prove to Naruto that not her, but the entire family want him back. Red Eyes Black Dragon roared at Naruto and Yubel, sensing that these two were not only dangerous, but also the ones that have been plaguing its master's heart. Yubel scoffed at the dragon in front of her. Naruto's red eyes were much more dangerous than this hatchling. Both duelists readied themselves for this duel. One fighting to fix the mistake that she and her family made to one of their own, while the other wants the past to remain in the past and move forward to the future that he wants. The results of this duel will prove whose will and determination in greater. The end. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.